Matt's Red Show here. I've come to uh, a place, I, guess, I think I'm sort of near, uh, God, I'm not even sure where I'm at. Somewhere near now then, Minnesota. <laughs> Sorry, I'll put, the, I'll put the address where I'm at right here. There it is, that's where I'm at. Um, at Frankensteiner's Car Show. It's a car show full of rat rods and kind of anything goes cars. Um, all, kinds of, all kinds of different makes and models and years and stuff, but the, the primary reason I'm out here is to film the rat rods. These things are like custom made, usually by dudes, and they just tack them on, they, they weld them together, they put them together with all kinds of pieces. There's even one with a diesel engine here, I think. And so I'm gonna just kind of walk around, maybe talk to some of these guys. But there's a lot of cool cars out here today. When I was a kid, I used to love rat rods. Like, uh, the cartoons, basically, of them. There was a cartoon magazine uh, I used to have. I think it was called Cartoons or something like that, or Rat Rod Magazine, or I don't know, something like that. But I remember all these comic books that I used to have when I was a kid, and I used to draw these cars when I was a kid. Some rat rods on Matt's Rad Show. Frankensteiner's Car Club car show today, guys. Thanks for uh, clicking on this video. Here comes a pretty blue one. Not a rat rod. Not a rat rod. But cool nonetheless. So let's take a look at some cars. Done in 2007. Mm -hmm. Ended up with this one about three years ago and uh, built flathead. <coughs> What's 300 horse to the crank? I got 270 to the wheels. Posi 9 inch Pete and Jake chassis, five speed transmission. Uh, this car is really a lot of fun. Fast. It looks like it. I love the shifter too. It's your Gun 38 shifter. special. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when I got it, there was no license, there was nothing in there for gauges, uh -huh. and uh, that's what year I was born. So I had that license plate for probably, you know, 40 years sitting in my shop. Cars done in signage. So I'm like, what a perfect spot. You know, there's a big hole right here. Oh, yeah. I just cut it open bigger. And put that in there and yeah it's one that you know when you have shiny cars and stuff that <laughs> you can you know I go home and I get people rides in these things I go out my field and whip donuts and nice and they get dirty <laughs> I love it you know you gotta wash them you just drive them <laughs> so yeah it's a 28 Ford Roadster called the raunchy rat rod awesome Nice. I was driving it last summer, giving a guy a ride, the wheel came off. I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> Quick release wheel. That was kind of up. <laughs> Put it back on real quick while it's driving? Or? Yeah, I, I was able to get it, but I was like, what? <laughs> so my buddy came over, and my rats were, were like this. <laughs> we come back home, and I said, uh, Let's drive this one, and I backed it out of the garage and went down the road. And mm -hmm. Realized that I had lost my rat. <laughs> the next morning, I took a drive and was laying on the side of the road. <laughs> so I found it again. But so I just was playing because people come in my garage and they look at my cars and I go, "It was just being funny." But I can't believe I found it. Yeah, that's kind of amazing. It was about three miles down the road, just sitting on the shoulder of the road. I figured somebody had a road over it. So I had it like this, I was like, okay, we're... <laughs> it was Shoulder. built on horsepower TV. Was, oh, okay, very cool. Yeah, and it's kind of, I've left it pretty much alone. The only thing I've done is put a different, had a black air cleaner on it, Mike. Yeah. It's a blower motor, it needs a blower. Yeah. It's air cleaner. Cool. Um, other than that, I left it alone. I put a posi in it, didn't have a posi. I dynoed it, I dynoed it. it got 300 horse, 365 to the wheels, did 140 miles an hour in fourth gear. Jeez. So it's, it, this car's a blast. Scoot. <laughs> it scoots really good. Um, 
it started out with just like three three people got together and decided to call it the Frankensteiners <laughs> because you, you built your own cars and used whatever parts you had. Nice. And then it just kept growing and growing. I had a few rat rods and it's not all the rat rod show. It's uh, just a family oriented club. We put on a show every fall. We help do the spring thing right here. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of group of guys that like cars and get together and have a family oriented outing. Cool. It's a 1931 Chevy. It's got a 350 in it, 350 turbo. Um, I found it up in Duluth, Minnesota. It was all in pieces, sitting in a trailer. And I brought it home, and it's taken about 10 years to put it together. Still not finished, but getting there. Slow but sure. Once you start driving them, you don't work on them that much anymore. Give me a holler. Some pretty sweet bass. Thirty-two Chevrolet Cummins diesel, uh, automatic power steering, power brakes, air ride suspension, um, thirty Chevrolet grill. Um, I should show you something cool. Yeah. The center console uh -huh. was a pair of leather pants. <laughs> what I wanted was a place to put my cell phone. And I'm out of pockets. <laughs> That's awesome. 1955 Chevy Dash. Um, it's chopped six inches. Uh, what do you say? Overdrive transmission. Uh -huh. Car's a lot of fun. It's got a suburban rear end and a 373 gears. It's pretty fast. <laughs> How fast do you think it goes? Uh, I drove it up 90 miles an hour. All right, yeah. It's cool. just got done, so um, yeah, it's kind of unusual to put a diesel in them. Yeah. A lot of black smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it kind of fun. I don't know if I've ever seen one with a diesel oh. engine in it. Maybe we should start it, huh? Wow. <laughs> 
That's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah, uh, about six months to make. Is that it? Okay. Tires out of New York. All right. You bring it down here for the show, or are yep. you from Minnesota? Yeah, no, we, we live local, Forest okay. Lake, and mm -hmm. just a nice day to get out. Yeah, absolutely. First car show this summer. Well, we're hoping to do some more showing with the car this summer. And yeah. Let's get a controller on his phone to light it up. It's in the dash, too? Yeah. Oh, nice. Shifter way up high there. Put your battery back here. Oh, okay. Battery, air tank, and all that back here. Trap door. Very cool. Yeah, that's what got me inspired when we did that. Hopefully, we'll get some trophies. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome, man. Thanks for showing it with me. You betcha. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. This, this is the one you guys did first? Yeah. How do you get a hold of tires like that? Huh? How do you get a hold of tires like that? Yeah. Those are cool. Tacked on there. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. Never did a car in his life. Really? Nope. So you a welder before this then or? Nope. Really? Building this car. He's got the touch. Stock 302 engine in it with an FMX tranny bag and four link in the rear. Um, I put it together over a winter uh, and four months is what it took me to put it together. Four months. And then we've had, you know, they're never done, so we've added sure a done. few things here and there. Yeah, so. yeah it's been fun. Um, I love the car shows, I love everybody's imagination and just glad to be part of it yeah so uh, where's the whole rat rod kind of community come from or how did to be honest with you i don't really know yeah um, i mean you know back in back in the day i mean this is what you drove as a kid our parents didn't buy us you know camaros and <laughs> yeah. you know stuff like that so yeah. we always roached out the farmers in the neighborhood and Paid maybe 25, 30 bucks for the car, took it home, got the motor running, and you know, just yeah. went out and had fun. I think that's where it stems from. Yeah. Yeah. I love the steel rod and everything stuff too. Yeah. yeah. Rebar. The steel rod right here. That yeah, rebar. Rebar. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That's my favorite. What's that say there? We wouldn't need to match my hair. That's just stupidity. Yeah, that's the truth. Okay. Yeah, like I say, it's a stock 302, so I'm not really sure how many oars. Okay. Um, the motor actually come out of a 78 Granada okay. and had less than 38,000 miles on it. So, okay. yeah, I was excited about that. Yeah. 
The inside is, is, is top grade burlap, of course. Okay. The roof is off uh, one of my neighbor's hot tub covers. <laughs> I made into the roof. Okay, cool. And then we picked up the uh, trunk for it at the swap meet down in uh, Maple Lake. Okay. So, cool. yeah. It's just a form of art. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Cool. So is that your, your mom? Your mom's represented in the in the dragonfly. dragonfly. Yep. Cool. Yeah, she passed on three years ago, and all during the funeral, the burial, and even getting home, there was a dragonfly that uh, basically stuck to the antenna on our car the whole way. So. I believe that's my mother coming back with me, so now she goes wherever we go. And as normal, she's always out front. <laughs>
still watching this video, I'm guessing you're a car person. You get it. You understand why somebody could spend countless hours restoring an old 32 Ford, or an old Chevy, maybe an old pickup, or creating something from a bunch of random parts. You get it. Some may ask you, what is it that drives you to do it? To restore an old piece of junk until it's best to show? What drives you to spend the night in the garage trying to replace a part that nobody else will notice but you? What drives you to purchase a car on its last leg? I guess the reasons are different for each person, but I think for most it's to hang on. To hang on to something from the past. Maybe something from our childhood or teen years. Or maybe it's just freaking cool. To drive something you've made yourself. It's not the dealerships. It wasn't made by some factory robot. It was made by a person painstakingly crafted at every detail. And now the car is part of who you are. And you're part of the car. It's true, we can't take any of the stuff with us when we leave this earth someday. So family needs to be the most important thing. But we can leave something behind. something beautiful. So here's to all the cars that turn heads, that jolt us out of our mundane time at a stoplight, that make us take a deeper look and remember how things used to be, and maybe how things still are. Thanks for watching this episode of Matt's Rat Show. Alright guys, well thanks for dropping by this episode of Mass Red Show. Check out all these rat rods with me. I think it's so cool. I love how these guys have put little little like remembrance pieces of their family into the cars that they have. I think that was kind of the coolest thing um, that I saw here today was just how these guys customize them. You know, these guys are our family guys, a lot of them, and they, and they work their family into their cars. They love their family, they have friends, uh, they work on these cars together with. These cars become a part of who they are, and the part of who they are is found in these cars and vice versa. Uh, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, these cars I have like, impassion the spirit of the people who built them. Now I wish I had more skills to work on cars like this, but you guys make the cars, I'll make the videos, and we'll call it even. Um, anyways guys, thanks for watching this episode of Matt's Red Show. Absolutely loved it out here today, so cool. Now I gotta figure out how to get me a rat rod and a VW bus. Maybe a VW bus rat rod. Is that even possible? Gosh, there's an idea. <laughs> anyways guys, thanks for watching this episode. Click like and subscribe. If you like, you can get yourself a Matt Rad Show t-shirt. Maybe I should make a Hot Rod Matt Rad Show t-shirt. That'd be cool. So thanks for watching this episode, guys. Please uh, share this video with your car clubs, with your friends, and uh, get some more uh, likes and subscribers here on my channel. Check out some of my other car videos, too. I got quite a few car videos on this channel. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.